Um, yep, okay, let's do it. <clears throat> so, there's a lot of issues with the political compass test, obviously. You can't plot political opinions super well on two axes, but it's a pretty good, like, rough estimation um, as to where people are at. But yeah. Um, so, page 106. If human... if Great. Messed up the first word. Nice YouTube video. No, anyway. If economic globalization is inevitable, it should primarily serve humanity rather than the interest of transnational corporations. Strongly agree. Obviously. Um, the point... Of, a lot of people tend to forget this. But the point of our economy is to serve humanity. It's to serve us. A lot of people, whether consciously or subconsciously, have, you know, through the status quo, through the values it reinforces, kind of got the idea that, well, in some ways, you know, humans work for the economy, you know, the sacrifice yourself to, to the stock market during the pandemic, um, stuff like that. Important to keep in mind that, hey, the point is that the economy is supposed to help us, right? We're not, we're just not supposed to sacrifice ourselves to the economy. Um, I'd always support my country, whether it was right or wrong. Strongly disagree. I don't believe that you should be tied to any, to supporting anything. Um, really, you know, in principle that you don't agree with, you know. And just because, you know, a nation, you know, that, that has been arbitrarily assigned to have jurisdiction over the geographical location and the coordinates upon which you were born, I don't believe that that in any way should give you any moral obligation to do something. Obviously not. Now, if my country is fighting for a cause which I support, then obviously I'll support it. But if it's doing that I don't, if it's doing something that I don't, no, absolutely not. So whether it was right or wrong, no, strongly disagree. I have my own principles, my own values. I don't want to be tied to anything just based on some arbitrary geographical location. No one chooses their country of birth, so it's foolish to be part of it. That's right, okay? I believe in hard work, in meritocracy, okay? In your work, deciding your, you know, success, your outcomes in life, and you should be part of your own achievements, not achievements of some arbitrary group of people that you are somehow lumped in with. That's why I believe in market socialism, because market socialism equalizes the quality of opportunity and free public education, and free public health care. All of that equalizes a quality of opportunity and leads to the effort you put in and, you know, your work ethic, for example, contributing more, and the socioeconomic condition of, like, your parents, for example, contributing less. So, no. Um, oh, yes, it is foolish to be part of it. Absolutely. Um, our race has many superior qualities compared with other races. Strongly disagree. Zero reputable scientific evidence on this. As you will see in the debate that will have in November. Uh -huh. um, I just have to reread them every time so I don't do a, a, a yikes. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. This question is weird. <laughs> um, I believe you can work with the enemy of my enemy for his common goals. I wouldn't necessarily them my friend because of that i think the question is asking more about oh can you work with them they can be my friend in some goals yes um but i am not going to unconditionally support them just because they don't like something that i don't like um military action that defies international law is sometimes justified no um i believe that there are there are very few international conflicts that can't be solved um, peacefully or democratically or, you know, diplomatically. Um, but out of those that can't, I don't believe there are any of those that require the violation of international law. I, no. Very, very, I have people who says that, you know, international law is something we can just ignore and throw away. No. International law is important. Okay? There's, there's no need to, to be, you know, war hawkish, very, very hungry for for conflict, okay? Um, military action that divides it. There is now a worrying fusion of, of information and entertainment. Yup. Strongly agree. 
Case in point, Steven Crowder, who is a, uh, believe it or not, comedian, apparently, allegedly, in Minecraft. Um, uh, and, you know, a lot of this content appears to, like, normies in some supportive way, like, ha, ah, look, it's a funny skit of me dressing up as a trans woman and going to Planned Parenthood and telling them to get me pregnant. I don't know. Uh-huh. Funny. Funny. Uh-huh. And now you're in like the rabbit hole and now you believe all poor people are degenerate and uh and other all other types of minorities LGBT people are, you know, swaying from, from God's order. So yeah, there's absolutely a worrying fusion there. Um especially on the conservative side. Almost exclusive. Like People are ultimately divided more by class than nationality. True. I have more in common with, you know, a uh, another, you know, teenager, let's say, living in the, I don't know, the United States that has a similar socioeconomic condition to me than I do with the child of a billionaire here in Sweden. Yep, people are divided more by class than nationality, absolutely. Um, controlling inflation is more important than controlling unemployment. Now, this question seems, it seems really weird, right? But actually, through my economics class, okay, I have learned what this question is in referral to. It was like a big eye-opening moment. Because like, ah, yes, it's that question that is on all those political tests. It doesn't make any sense. Um, now it makes sense. So this is actually in regards to exchange rates. So by having a high exchange rate, by having your currency be worth a lot, uh, that has a downward pressure on inflation. By having a low exchange rate, a weak currency, that reduces unemployment because then your goods become cheaper on the international marketplace. So industries, domestic industries that export money are going to be you know, more popular, more successful on the international stage in, in, the, in global trade because purchasing the products is worthless, basically. So this is, the question is more about is it better having a high or low exchange rate? Um, I think that having a managed exchange rate is the best. Um, but if I had to pick between having a low or high exchange rate, I would probably pick a high exchange rate um, for a whole wide range of reasons. But it can be managed under a uh, under a managed exchange rate, so it's not a, a massive, massive uh, big deal. So yeah, um, I would say that I prefer a higher exchange rate, not because inflation is like inherently more important than employment. It's still a bad question, but I think what they're trying to get at is if I like a higher or lower exchange rate. So I'm going to say that generally, I think a higher exchange rate is because corporations cannot be trusted to voluntarily protect the environment, they require regulation. Yes, <laughs> they require regulation because fundamentally, the only real responsibility a corporation has, legally, is to provide a profit to its shareholders. That's it. That's all. Caring about the environment isn't even on the top five list, probably. It's, it's not on there. We need to make sure it gets on there. Because if we don't, then there are negative market externalities that harm everyone on the planet. Just because it's not an inherent incentive to private business. Yes, we need environmental regulations on corporations. Very, very, very necessary. From each, according to his ability, each according to his need is a fundamentally good idea yes so what this means from as i understand it at least feel free to correct me if i'm incorrect um is that based on your personal capacity based on how much of your personal capacity how much of your personal effort you give you should be compensated based on your personal needs so let's say that for example we look at me, I'm, you know, neurotypical, um, able-bodied. Um, I had, uh, you know, I'm generally in a good socioeconomic status. So my ability, relatively, is, is fairly high. Um, so if I, you know, if I'm, you know, not very productive when you take into consideration my ability, 
then I should be compensated less. However, if there's somebody who has more issues, uh, issues is the wrong word, but um, has like lower overall like ability, I suppose, in today's economy, so things like being non able bodied, for example, um, you get you, very heavily discriminated against um, in today's economy, for example, um, stuff like that, then depending on your effort, even though you may not be as like economically productive as I am, you're still given more effort based on your personal ability. So you should be compensated higher. I strongly believe in this. Because I believe that it's fundamentally your effort that should dictate your, your compensation. So yes, strongly agree. The freer the markets, the freer their people. Nope, absolutely not. In order to have and reap the benefits of actual markets, we need to have strong regulations that break apart monopolies uh, and ensure that we actually get benefits like competition um, and, and all those things. Because fundamentally, if you have an oligopoly or monopoly, then not only do you have a structure that prioritizes profits and that, you know, hurts like workers, stuff like that, but you also don't even get any benefits from having markets. You get nothing. Adam Smith. Um, even he believed that you need, you know, monopoly regulations uh, on markets. And he's the, he's the big capitalist guy that everyone talks about. Um, so yeah, strongly disagree. You need regulations for a market to help the people. It is a sad reflection on our society that something as basic as drinking water is now a bottled branded consumer product. Um, generally... To some extent, yes, I feel like something like drinking water should be, um, should absolutely be something that's publicly, you know, not something you have to like pay for. Like, ah, uh, yes, here is bottled brand, you know, tap water, but we added like three minerals, so it's completely different than your tap water. Um, and by the way, your tap water is garbage because of pollution and stuff, because these things don't exist for a lot of places and the regulations don't exist um no i don't want that I, I would prefer a system where um like we have a pretty good water system here in sweden where literally almost any tap you can just drink from and it's fine so that's why it's not like a massive big deal it's not like ah yes you can tell the uh you can tell the quality of a society based on whether or not their bottle their water is bottled and branded no it's not really a big deal um although i do agree with the general sentiment it's like no it's not, it's not really a, a big... Um, land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and, bought and sold. True. I believe land should be publicly owned. Now, personal property, like, for example, your house. Yeah, absolutely, you can own that. But land? No. When it comes to being effective with land, like in terms of resource allocations, having it be publicly owned is way better. When it comes to preventing people from hoarding you know, loads of land and, you know, raising, for example, prices, gentrification, stuff like that, that would be sold if it's, you know, publicly owned. Yeah, basically, land shouldn't be a commodity to be bought and sold. It should be owned by, you know, collectively owned by the uh, the voter base or the electorate of that given geographical region. Seems makes sense to me. It is regrettable that many personal fortunes are made by people who simply manipulate money and contribute nothing to their society. I agree, 100%. So, if we talk about this, if we, if we spread out to capital a bit more than just money, if we talk about landlords, for example. What do landlords do? Like, what, what do they produce? They don't produce the houses. I mean, they don't build them. They, they, don't, they don't, like, take care of the houses. They don't, like... You know, go and do the utility works if they're broken, paint the walls. No, you have you hire contractors to do that. What do <laughs> landlords produce? Homeless people. That's the one thing they produce. Um, they don't produce. They, they don't contribute anything. They don't make anything. They just hold capital, hold resources, hold something that I believe is a human right, shelter, and expect financial compensation for it. And I think this is extremely regrettable, especially considering that people who are landlords tend to do pretty well on the socioeconomic hierarchy. I think this is an issue. Um, I believe the people at the top there should be the people 
that produce goods or services that are beneficial and that improve the quality of life of the average citizen. Not people that hoard resources that people need to survive and take money in exchange for. I strongly agree that this is it's regrettable that this takes place. Protectionism is sometimes necessary in trade. No. I am very, very, very pro. I'm pro free trade. I like it. There are certain situations where protectionism can be used properly. But I feel like if we do have a good, uh, if we have good laws like the, the World Trade Organization, if it's, if it's handled in a good way um, and we ensure that we have good international communications between nations, then free, question, free trade is really, really good because it reduces the price of commodities for the average people. It increases efficiency just around the nation as a whole, uh, around the, the country as a well, whole, the, the planet as a whole. Um, because a country doesn't need to spend a uh, disproportionate amount of their resources um, to create, you know, a resource that another country can produce for way less resources. Um, and they can, still, they can still get those resources without having to dedicate all of their own national resources, while they might be really good at producing something else that other countries need, and then they can get it for cheap. No, free trade is, is pretty good. I like free trade. Now, there are negatives to it, obviously, but these should be, this is just like immigration. There may be negatives in, in, in immigration. Uh, certain people are hurt. For example, high school dropouts. Um, but I believe that it's the responsibility of the government to use the economic benefits of immigration, which there is massive economic benefits of immigration, and redistribute that money towards programs that help the people, the small minority of people that are hurt by immigration. Same with free trade. There are certain negatives to free trade, and I believe that it is the job of trade organizations, trade agreements, to help the minority of people that are hurt by trade. You need to, you need to manage the, uh, the risk and reward and allocate, um, allocate resources in the best possible way to make it better for everyone. The only social responsibility of a company would be to deliver profits to its shareholders. Strongly disagree. That's why we need environmental regulations, because this is how it is right now. I disagree with this. Um, I believe that the responsibility of a company should be, obviously, um, to help the workers to work there, to make sure that they get good pay, that they have good conditions, they don't work themselves to death. Um, that's also super important. Um, they also need to make sure that the interests of society as a whole are maintained. So, for example, in a worker cooperative society, where everyone will be, let's say you have a, a, a private company and a worker cooperative country, a company, um, on the same, like, they have the same amount of money, basically. In the private one, you will have a very bad distribution of wealth, where a lot of it is concentrated at the top and very little at the bottom. In a worker cooperative, you will have it so that the person at the top typically only makes like at maximum three times as much as people at the bottom. While in the private business, that average right now in the United States is 400 times as much. In this society, the people who are making the decisions, which is the general workers, which is everyone in the business basically, has it's very similar, if not the exact same, material interests as the rest of the people in the country. Well, in this one, the people who hold the power, the people making the decisions, are the people that are rich, very rich, you know, have a lot of resources, are in the top echelons of society. So what's the difference here? Well, these people, for example, have to actually care a little bit about climate change. Because unlike these people, unlike the, the 400 times as much paid people, they can't just buy a private island or a super yacht and survive the sea levels rising and just sell their homes and move um, when the sea levels rise. They can't do that. Um, so stuff like this is, is why I believe that there should be more of a social responsibility to companies than just, um, than just providing profits to shareholders. <laughs> the rich are too highly taxed. Strongly disagree. We have seen um, a dramatic drop in the amount of money we tax the rich all over the world, especially in developed nations. Um, this is true for the United States. This is true for Sweden. This is just, it's, it's been dropping significantly uh, relative to how it was before. And also, it's, it's not like Donald Trump paid $750, Amazon paid $0 in federal tax, um, you know, I think 2019 or 2018. No. There's so much money. Um, that can be used more effectively, can be redistributed 
to increase the median wage of everyone in the nation, the median wa median wage of everyone, um, rather than just increasing, you know, the the high score game that billionaires play and how much money they can possibly. Earn. Those with the ability to pay should have access to higher standards of medical care. Strongly disagree. Your life is not worth any more just because you're rich. That's fundamentally what it boils down to. Everyone has the equal right to life. Um, regardless of how much money you have. Government should penalize businesses that mislead the public. Yes. However, this needs to be managed carefully, obviously. Um, so, for example, a way by which to do this well would be, let's say a company lies about what their product contains or what it does. These are fairly for like objective measures by which you can determine whether or not a business is lying. Um, and I be believe the business should be punished for that, obviously. If they're not, then they can put, you know, like whatever on their, you know, on their, on their packages. There was a PragerU video a while ago um, <laughs> where a guy, the, the, there was some, like some cookie guy um, who was making, um, who was complaining about government regulation. And he was making like peanut cookies or whatever, okay? And he didn't put peanuts on the list of ingredients of these cookies. And then he got super ass pained because the government was like, hey, maybe you should definitely put peanuts, a food that people can have deadly allergic reactions to on the ingredient list. And he said, well, oh, it's self obvious. It says on the little, it says it's like peanuts, you know, cookies, of course it has peanuts. Like you need to be able to have common sense. No, no, <laughs> this is something that can give people deadly allergic reactions. Um, you need to ensure that businesses don't mislead the public in the name of convenience or profits or whatever. Um, yeah, like the horse meat thing. Exactly. You know, stuff like that. Um, strongly agree. A genuine free market requires restriction on the ability of predator multinationals to create monopolies. Yes, I already talked about this previously. I'm not going to go on about it. Abortion, when the woman's life is not threatened, should always be illegal. Strongly disagree. Um, the right to personal autonomy trumps, trumps the right to life. Um, there's, there's a lot of different situations you're going to, you're going to have to go super in-depth for this. Um, you know, yes, a lot of people acknowledge that it is a life, obviously, but is it a person? That's a real discussion. And then you have to get into personhood um, because we're clearly fine with extinguishing life for our convenience. Um, in a wide different range of like we kill parasites in our bodies, we kill bacteria, those are life. We kill animals to make food, those are still life. But the question is, is if it's personhood. And there's a whole lot of really like there's a it's a really long argument to you know the abortion debate. Um but just something that's interesting to think about is that okay, if we give you know, if we grant fetuses personhood, if the mother then, you know, does something illegal. He shouldn't be allowed to be arrested then because technically there's a person in her stomach that hasn't done anything wrong. Why should that person be put in prison? That's not very fair, is it? If they do something that would grant it, you know, that would, um, that would, uh, deserve a deportation. You can no longer do that because what did the baby do to get deported? They didn't do anything. It's a person he needs his own rights, right? Um, yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of issues. If you assign person to fetuses, it's, um, and then there's also the, of course, the objective benefits um, to uh, to having abortion be available, um, increase in like, like reducing criminality, um, money saved based on you know people who are born uh, when their parents don't actually want them, you know, like as kids they weren't planning to have a kid, are more likely to engage in criminal activity, do poorly in school. That would mean that they need to get costs for like things like food stamps. Um, police, prisons, if they get locked up, stuff like that. There is a whole lot of issues when it comes to abortion um, that 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 uh, support the point of it being legal. Um, that it should be legal. Basically. All authority should be questioned. Yes, should be questioned. Absolutely. Why is this, why does this authority exist? One of the main authorities is the authority that um, that business owners have over workers. That's something that should be questioned, um, and it has been questioned. And it's been shown that there's positive outcomes to the questioning in it, both ethically, morally, in terms of productivity, empirically, and ideologically. Um, yeah, 
question authority. Absolutely. Doesn't mean that all authority is unjust, but you should at least question it. A knife for an eye, tooth for a tooth. I don't know. This is like personal belief stuff. No, I personally don't believe in that. I guess punitive criminal justice. That's what this could be about. Um, but yeah, it's no. I, I personally don't believe it. Um, taxpayers should not be expected to prop up any theaters or museums that cannot survive on a commercial basis. I disagree. So, for example, let's say we want a museum talking about the Holocaust. You know, something that, you know, it could happen here, you know, like um, talking about the material conditions that led up to the seizure of power that took place in Germany, um, which led to the concentration camps being built. A museum like that, I don't know if it would necessarily survive on a commercial basis. I don't know if enough people are, you know, hyper interested in that to be able to pay exorbitant amounts of money to be informed about that. Um, I don't know if we should charge people to be informed about that. If people should just be able to walk in there and take part of the knowledge and create a more educated population. Um, I don't believe there should be a cost for that. So those are two situations in which this museum probably wouldn't survive on a commercial basis, but it's still very beneficial to society. Um, so yeah, I, I believe that there should be certain, um, you know, I guess, you know, theaters or museums and stuff like that that should be uh, created, even though they aren't, like, financially um, effective in that regard. Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. I disagree. Um, because think about this. If you stop making classroom attendance compulsory, who are the people that are not going to go to school? I can tell you this. It's not going to be the educated people. I mean, the, like the, the, the children of educated people, of well-off people, because they know that education is one of the most important building blocks for a good society and for, you know, a successful life. The people that are going to be pressured not to go to school is going to be the children of parents who are socioeconomically not well-off, so that they can contribute to the house, so that they can contribute in, you know, working, making money, stuff like that. And that's going to further exacerbate inequality and is going to rob them of the opportunity to have, you know, a good successful life by not getting educated. All people have their rights, but it is important. It's better for all of us that different sorts of people keep to their own kind. No. Multiculturalism has a whole lot of positive benefits, you know, social trust, cohesion, good food, very important. Um, there's no, there's no reason, and you also would need to violate a bunch of, you know, like the right for somebody to move around or to live, you know, where they want, to associate with whoever they'd like to associate with, stuff like this, which is all harmed by, by preventing people to, from being with their own kind. Um, bit of a, good parents sometimes have to spank, no. This is empirically demonstrated. Um, spanking children that school should not. Schools, well, I, why do they make them negative? Schools should not make classroom attendance compulsory. Yeah, I disagree. I think it should be compulsory. Um, schools not, yeah. Yeah, okay, no, this is right. I don't know, maybe you're a bit confused. Man. I'm, I'm fairly certain this is right, right? I want it to be compulsory, so I strongly disagree with this statement. Um, I think it's, I think I'm, I hate when they do these negative things. I really dislike it because it makes me so confused. Okay. Um, yeah, double negatives. Ooh, double negatives. Um, good parents sometimes have to spank their children. No, there's psychological evidence on this. No, it doesn't have any positive effects. It's not good. Don't worry, Manic. Uh, it, it, it's not, but you, you're harming your child. It doesn't produce good outcomes. It doesn't teach them to be disciplined. It does nothing. It just hurts them and provides poor psychological help. Uh, it's natural for children to keep some secrets from their parents. Yeah, natural, obviously. That's what it's asking, right? Um, possessing marijuana for personal use should not be a criminal offense. Can we get it true? Um, absolutely. It's they're both when it comes to, like, you know, morally. Uh, when you think about it, I don't believe anyone should be punished for doing something that only has, you know, impacts for themselves. Um, victimless crime in that regard. It also has positive outcomes. You have more people searching treatment voluntarily, um, less people getting addicted, 
Um, oh, this is only about cannabis as well, um, which is even more of a reason not to criminalize it. Um, it has certain positive health benefits. Um, yeah, just drug use in general should be decriminalized. I've made a video on this. If you Google Rose Wrist, decriminalizing drugs, or if you just scroll down in the feed a little bit, you should be able to find it. The prime function of schooling should be to equip the future generation to find jobs. No. I don't believe so. I believe that should be part of it, probably, to teach necessary skills, but I don't believe that should be the prime function. The prime function of schooling should be to provide the next generation with the tools they need to be happy in life and to be able to pursue the interests and the passions that they find useful. Um, and I don't believe there's like, it's like find jobs or follow your passion. I don't believe that's the case. Um, but I believe that the fundamental thing should be teaching something that there, there's actually an interest for um, among the children because otherwise you're not going to be effective in education anyway. Uh, people with serious inheritable diseases should not be allowed to reproduce. No. No eugenics. I don't like it. Um, you're violating somebody's freedom to, to reproduce, to do what they want for bodily autonomy. Um, no. Eugenics is cringe. Don't, don't do it. Don't do eugenics, kids. The most important thing for children to learn to accept is discipline. No. Sometimes it can be useful. But it's certainly not the most important thing for them to accept. No regard. Um, the most important thing to accept, I think, is compassion. Critical thinking skills. Stuff like that. That's very important for children to learn. Uh, accepting discipline is a good way to uh, ensure that unjust power hierarchies and structures remain. The next generation. Um, that's what teaching a lot of discipline and sleep. There are no savage and civilized people. There are only different cultures. I agree with this. Because savage and civilized are very, very, very strange words. Um, this has to do with, you know, this is very subjective. There's no way to objectively say, oh, one culture is savage and one is civilized. It all depends on your own cultural predilections. Now, there are cultures that I think are better. For example, I prefer Swedish culture to Saudi Arabian culture. I like it that, you know, women are able to drive, for example, and to leave the house without their husband. I think that's a good thing. Um, but it doesn't mean that they're like savage or less civilized. It just means that they, I have cultural preferences. Um, those who are able to work and refuse the opportunity should not expect society's support. I disagree. I believe that everybody should be able to accept society's support up to a point. Everyone should be able to, um, to, to live their life, right? If you have zero societal support, um, then there is... You're just gonna die if you like if you if you're having trouble, you know. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start over. So first of all, um, having good societal, you know, social uh, program stuff like that makes it so that there is like leverage that people can have towards corporations. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's say you live in a little town, there is only one business there, like that actually employs a significant amount of people. Okay, and the conditions there is awful, so bad. Okay. The, you don't get paid enough. There's no paid leave. Um, it's the dangerous workplace, stuff like that. Um, but in a system where there is no like social security systems, um, where there is no you know unemployment benefits, stuff like that, then the person is basically forced to work there. Because if they don't, they die. Um, so it provides leverage in that regard. Second of all, I believe that things like you know writers, artists, people like that. While it may not be beneficial in the short term, I believe people should still be able to pursue that as an interest. Even if it's not like economically beneficial in like the, you know, being able to pick jobs that currently exist. Uh, I believe that's something that should be, uh, that should be allowed. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, that, that, that's what I believe. I believe in, in social systems, both because they have positive outcomes and on like a, a philosophical level. When your travel is better not to think about it, but to keep busy with material things, no, I think you need to confront your problems. Um, first generation immigrants can never be fully integrated within the new country. Nope. It's entirely possible for them to be. Also, integration is a very subjective word. It depends on what you mean. Um, but no. Um, they, they can be fully integrated. Depending on my definition of integration, which is being able to function like successfully and being able to 
uh, be happy and have a good quality of life in the new name. Um, I think we're <laughs> Are we talking about serious throwing into that? And what's good for this most successful corporation is always ultimately good for us. No, absolutely not. What's good for Nestle is uh, draining all the water from developing countries. Not good for all of us in any way, shape, or form. Um, so yeah. Um, no, I disagree with this. No broadcasting institution, however independent its content, did I run out of battery on my... Um, could receive public funding. I disagree with this. I think that there are certain uh, institutions that should receive public funding um, because it helps, you know, them to stay clear of private interests. For example, I believe you should have a mix of private media and public media. Um, but then public media is able to report on things that aren't like profitable to report on, I suppose. Um, you can also get more like sort of um, news reporting based on the incentives of a government than just on a chat, uh, just on a, um, what's it called? From a private corporation, stuff like this. I believe that there absolutely should be um, public service content. And also they can provide again, good educational content uh, that may not be profitable. That not enough people are willing to like pay for, you know, to make it effective, but that still have a social good. Here in Sweden, we have something called SVT, Swedish television. And there are so many educational documentaries, series, you know, movies, all types of things that is completely free if you live in Sweden. Um, and this is obviously, you know, so it's not profitable, but it's still really good. Are civil liberties are being excessively covered in the name of counterterrorism? Yes. Um, it's been shown that the most, you know, effective ways to counter terrorism isn't by super strict, you know, like surveillance states, you know, stuff like that. It's by addressing the core inequalities that lead to and poor socioeconomic conditions that lead to the creation of terrorism. And those are said. A significant advantage to one party state is that it evolves all the arguments that delay process in a democratic political system. No, it's not an advantage. I believe in the free marketplace of ideas, guys. We need to have a, a nice, a nice discourse, a democratic discourse about what's going on in our nation, um, to ensure that we move in a direction that represents all the people. Although the electronic age makes surveillance easier, only wrongdoers need to be worried. No, I think it's very creepy that you can have that people have to be worried that their cell phones are spying on them um, or listening in to the conversations. This is something that absolutely happens. Um, where you talk about something. In the same room with your phone. I'm sure Chad has experienced this too, right? Like uh, something related, like getting a dog or whatever. And then in a few days, you'll get ads for like dog food or, you know, stuff like that. It's, it's real creepy. It's real cre creepy. And that's not something I'm, you know, comfortable with. I didn't consent to my phone recording me, uh, stuff like that. It happens like minutes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's hella spooky. Um, the death penalty should be an option. For the most serious of crimes. Um, no. It's not morally okay. And it's not. Um, it has negative outcomes. When it comes to like. It's way more expensive. There are mistakes that take place in death row. Obviously. That cannot be amended. But that can be amended through life in prison. Um, yeah. I don't believe the state should ever have the judicial power to execute somebody. Um, for a whole way of Uh in a civilized society, one must always have people above to be obeyed and people below to be commanded. No, I don't believe so. I believe that it's entirely possible to have a democratic, um, a, uh, a direct democracy um, with, with flat hierarchy that is possible and is fully functional. Abstract art that doesn't represent anything shouldn't be considered art at all. Nope. Art is art. Anything can be art. If it provokes strong emotions to you, it can be art. And, you know, everyone likes to say that, oh, you know, when a blank piece of canvas, how is this art? Well, it's, you know, meta commentary on what is art? Is it, does that have to be something that's visually appealing? Can it be something that provokes emotions? Can it be something that makes you think? There's a whole lot of different things. And this, you know, I don't know how many strong arguments you can have for this, but it's just, yes, yeah, it's just a value that you have. Um, and criminal justice punishment should be more effective and important than the rehabilitation. Yes, absolutely. Um, wait, no, no, try and disagree. We want more rehabilitation. Um, because as basically, once again, positive societal outcomes, ta -ta, 
um, and fundamentally there are very few people that just like if anyone that's inherently criminal or bad and punitive just increases the risk of recidivism uh, people committing crimes again while rehabilitation ensures that they can be once again a, like a functioning member of society um, you know that follows the social contract and, and all that that cool thing just, just a nice a nice person to, to be around um, it is a waste of time to try to rehabilitate some criminals I mean, like the guy in Norway that like shot up at like an island of you know, like lefty youth politics people. You probably won't be able to rehabilitate him, but as a principle, I I don't think this is a good principle. I don't think it's a waste of time. No, no, I disagree. I don't think it's a waste of time. I don't think it's possible to rehabilitate everybody, but I think it's definitely not a waste of time to try. The business person and the manufacturer are more important than the writer and the artist. Strongly disagree. Um, because fundamentally, um, the people that bring about the big paradigm shift in society that move us forward considerably are typically not the business person and manufacturer who operate very tightly with the status quo, get a lot of profit. It's the writer, it's the artist, it's the philosopher that really move us forward with the, you know, new ideas in that regard. Um, so I don't believe they're more the business person, the manufacturer are more important. Mothers may have careers, but their first duty is to be homemakers. Any human being's first duty is to do whatever they like. No one should be confined to doing anything just based on the social group which they belong. To. Um. Yeah, it doesn't make. Uh, um, anyone should be able to do anything. Fathers should be able to be homemakers and spend time with their children. What if what what if the the husband wants to like be the person that's at home, takes care of the children, and the mother is really invested in their career, um, and is really interested in that, and has a passion for it. Nobody should be arbitrarily. Oh, you have to do this just because you you're a you're a woman or whatever. No. Um, bad wives and tried. <laughs> Multinational companies are unethically exploited the planetary resources of the developing countries. There's a lot of exploitation that takes place abroad um, based on, um, yeah, based on companies, obviously. Um, I think this is true. I'm not entirely sure what plant genetic resources are, but we do see multinational companies exploiting resources of developing countries in general, so I'm going to say I agree. Making peace with the establishment is an important aspect of maturity. No, I don't believe anyone's mature. For making peace with the establishment, you know, in, I don't know, 1940s Germany. I don't believe that makes you mature. I think that what makes you really mature is having your own principles and your own values. And being able to express them, you know, and, and do whatever you'd like. Um, in that regard, and express your own opinions and take your own actions. Um, so yeah, no, making peace with the establishment is absolutely not an important aspect of maturity. On religion, astrology accurately explains many things. <laughs> no, you cannot be more without being religious. No, absolutely not. There's no objective morals that can all be found through religion. It's all subjective. Um, you can absolutely be a moral person without being religious. I don't see anything exclusive to religion in regards to uh, to morals. Charity is better than social security as a means of helping the genuinely disadvantaged. Strongly disagree. By the way, the same people that say this. It's, it, these are the type of people who will also say that um, that socialism doesn't work because of human nature is, is inherently selfish. Um, no. <laughs> Both like, yeah, you, you can't rely on charity. It's not consistent. And it's, it's, it's just not as effective. Just empirically. It doesn't do as much as social security program. Um, my, metro, my astrology app told me to go somewhere and leave my phone at home. It's trying to get me. Yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> you have an astrology app. That's pretty cringe, though. Um, but yeah, some people are naturally unlucky. No, I haven't seen your research on this. Maybe there is. Maybe I'm missing it. But uh, to my knowledge, that's not the case. It's important that my child's school instills religious values. No, I don't want any, um, you know, unempirical style of thinking to be taught um, to, to my kids. It's fun. Okay, fair enough. 
Sex aside, marriage is usually immoral. No. I haven't heard a single convincing argument for this ever in my entire life. Um, ooh, your dad. What about people that are born into poor families? Are they not naturally unlucky? Um, I mean, it depends on what you mean by naturally, right? I think what they're trying to refer to is more like inherently. Like someone inherently is like unlucky or whatever. Um, I, see, I definitely see what you mean, though. I see what you mean. I don't feel like that's the question what I was referring to. I think they were talking inherently. Um, but yeah, absolutely. People are absolutely unlucky in the socioeconomic hand that they're dealt at their birth. I didn't. I haven't thought about that. Though. That, was a, that was a good point. A same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship. Oh, by the way, yeah, I've never heard a convincing argument for why sex is have matches immoral. Ever. In my entire life. Um, a same-sex couple in a stable, loving relationship should not be excluded from the possibility of child adoption. Yes, there's been wide meta-analyses meta -analyses showing that children uh, to same-sex parents do not perform any worse than, uh, than the children of straight parents. There's no reason why they shouldn't be allowed to. Pornography depicting consenting adults, adults should be legal for the adult population. I believe it should be legal. There are a lot of troubles with porn. There's a lot of problems with porn nowadays, a lot of them. But that's mostly an issue with um, just general cultural patriarchal attitudes that exist in society as a whole. I don't think it's anything inherent to pornography as a, as an industry. Um, and obviously, there's all that there's that bad cultural aspect leveled with issues of capitalism that come together to produce a very bad industry um, that exists today. But I don't think it's inherent to the pornography industry. What goes on in a private bedroom between consenting adults is no business of the state. Yeah, why, why should it be? Uh, no one can feel naturally homosexual. Only disagree. Um, these days, openness about sex has gone too far. No, it hasn't. In fact, uh, when we talk about it, uh, don't same-sex family kids perform better? Sometimes they do. Uh, there's like a few studies that say they do, but overall, it's just the same. And even if they do, it makes a difference. Um... These day openness about sex has gone too far? No, absolutely not. Um, there's been studies showing that the more like the more we talk about sex in school and stuff like that, the more education we give in that regard, um, the less the chances of somebody being raped is. They can recognize, you know, how consent works. Um, sexual assault rates go down. The risk of getting pregnant unintentionally goes down. The risk of getting sexually transmitted diseases goes down. No. Um, what goes on in your bedroom is no business of the state, but what about state-mandated girlfriends? Uh, I feel like the quiz should include some trans questions too, right? Yeah, perhaps they should. Well, they're not asking it, but for those who are watching this as my first video, trans rights. Uh, that minute Stacy Stacey for all. Um, but yeah, according to this again. What I've heard, they do, but it might be due to the them. Trans rights. Hey, there we go. Trans rights. Oh, there's a trans rights emote. How base is that? Wait, where is it? Where? Whatever, I'll find out later. I'm having way too much fun. I gotta focus. Focus. Let's see. Yep, looks about right. I think it was, like, here last time. I don't know what I've changed, though. Be free trade how much there we go use an emote and put trans at the end all right well, there we go we go hyper is trans well would you look at that what a surprise lib left who would have guessed who would have guessed 